Welcome everybody for today's massage and MLP yoga. And we are going to be doing a punk rarity, super fun, in the salon, massage, relaxation, awesome. Are you ready? First off, again, we're using balls. So some kind of a not too squishy ball, like these are tennis balls. Let me dump down my brightness here. There you go. Tennis balls or lacrosse balls, hockey balls. If you have a roller, you can use a roller too. This is my best friend's. It's a trigger point. It feels amazing. They're expensive. You can get Amazon brand for a lot cheaper, but if you have a roller, this one's neat because it pretends to be hands. It's got the palm, the fingers, the fingertips, and as you use it to roll out your kinks, it feels amazing. But this is more expensive and it's again a trigger point. And you can get plain ones or you can have ones with even bigger ridges if that works for you. But again, for today, you will need to have a couple <laughs> physical balls and a blank wall. So if you have a space that has an opening in your wall, we're going to be using that. Or maybe if you have a door without ridges, the idea is you're going to be actually using the wall and the balls to help <laughs> to rub out all of your relaxation. And yes, this is totally PG. <laughs> So welcome, 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 everybody. And we're going to get started. So today it's going to be less yoga and more massage relaxation because, of course, I'm punk rarity and punk rarity, well, any rarity, really. She just loves to relax. So be prepared. Bring water with you. After this, you will need to have a lot of water. Stay hydrated. It's the best way to recover from massages, especially with COVID, how we can't necessarily go to the massage parlor or the salon. This is going to be one thing you can do to help yourself to get some of those knots out. So let's get started. We're not going to use the balls yet, so you can put them away for a second. The playlist, again, is down below, and it's also in the chat. I'm actually just going to adjust this a little bit that way. Perfect. Okay. So as we get started today, as always, find a comfortable seat, or you could be standing for this. Again, we're going to be doing some warm-up, so first just kind of find your place. Notice how your body feels. It's going to feel a lot different later. <laughs> Take some calming breaths. Begin to count your breaths here. I'm going to do inhales and exhales, and then we're going to do holding box breath. So to begin with, inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. In, two, three, four. And out, two, three, four. In, and out. In, and out. And you can keep going at this pace if you like. Or on the next inhale. In, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold it out, three, four. Inhale, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, hold it out, three, four, in, hold, exhale, and hold, in, and again, you can go at your own pace now, faster or slower. Maybe you'd have a gentle close in your eyes and notice your breathing. Keep the count. Focus. Two, 
Two more breaths at your own pace. One more. And as you finish, come back to your normal breath. Hello, Kermit, welcome. All right, find the breath that works for you, whether that's the same speed or different. As we're coming into our massage and relaxation aid series, this is on using balls to help us to relax. We've already done blocks and straps and we've used staves <laughs> or staffs and we have just a couple more to go. We have pillows and a wall and I am bittersweet to say that I will be ending at the end of the year and focusing on bigger cosplay projects. I will still definitely do yoga for conventions. And again, I welcome anyone to ask conventions you like to invite me to do digital or in person as we can. And of course, these videos are gonna go up on YouTube so you can always come back to me. But for now, we're gonna do ball relaxation. So again, tennis balls, lacrosse balls, hockey balls from street hockey, whatever you have, get those ready. So these balls are used in what's called myofascial release. So in between the skin and your muscles is the fascia. And that's kind of what gets tight sometimes. So you're releasing that it's build up between your skin and moving and your muscles moving. And it also, these are hard enough that they will get into your muscles. So super exciting. It's going to release some of those muscles and connective tissue and allow you to relax because as we all know, relaxation is super awesome so it will also help to increase blood flow reduce muscle soreness and sustain functioning of your muscles and lymph cool right but if you're doing this with me remember to only do what's comfortable for you we do bob ross style here no pain ever so there will be some soreness some tightness some stiffness but if there's ever anything too hard contact your medical professional don't do it come back to your breathing and that is where you can stay while we continue to move forward so now that we've done that we've done our breathing we're going to set our intention this is all about relaxation so think about what you can do to help you both for this weekend as we're going into the holiday weekend for thanksgiving once you've got your intention Take a deep breath in and let it go. And then inhale, arms up. Exhale, palms come together, draw them down to your chest. Inhale in. Exhale, and now a big one to seal it in. Inhale deeply and let it go. And now that we've started to move our arms, inhale, shine your arms up. Maybe even invite a little look up. Exhale, arms down. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale up. Exhale down. And inhale up. Exhale down. This time, inhale up. Hold your arms up. Lower those shoulder blades down, widening out. And then inhale up. Exhale, twist to one side, finding your hands on your knees or the mat, breathing here for one breath. Then inhale up, exhale, other side. Inhale up. And at your own pace, start to go from side to side, maybe holding and twisting deeper, or maybe going fast. Find your own pace here. Keep going. Yeah, definitely. You will find places and muscles that are sore. If you happen to talk to a professional about it and it's a nagging soreness, maybe now's the time. You can do those digital consultations. They're supposed to be really cool. I'm wondering if I should keep on my coat and look cool or if I should take off it because it's kind of squiff squiffling on the microphone here. Let's see what happens. All right, so come back to center. 
Also, it's got this little rattly chain. <laughs> okay, back to center. Hands on your knees. Now I just glow up top. Okay, roll those shoulders back and down. Remember, I like to do four points, so forward, up, back, and down. And then one more time. Let's go the other direction. All right, keep going. Back, up, forward, and down. We're going to do a lot with our shoulders, our joints, our muscles here. So once you're ready, come to stillness. We're going to start doing our neck. So first, just kind of feel how your neck is feeling. Maybe do small movements. Don't do full circles yet. And then as you're ready, come to center and then inhale. Exhale, lower your shoulder to one ear. We haven't done this one together for a while. Take that same arm, the direction your head's going, maybe gently, just use the weight of your hand to press down. And maybe here you reach out with your arm on the opposite side, finding a place that feels good. And now maybe use your nose to draw a circle and just see if there's an angle that makes it better or worse. <laughs> worse in a good way, right? And breathe here. Keep that posture nice and neat. Slowly lower your arms if you had it up and then straighten back up. One breath here and then the other side. Taking that same side arm, maybe gently placing your hand on your head, maybe finding an area for the opposite arm and maybe using your nose to find a place. Oof, it's just a little tighter and breathe into it. And then you can lower, come back to center. And now here, if you want to do some neck rolls or any other stretches, gently with no pain, begin to ooh, find those little, little kinks in your neck. There you go. And then come back to center. The first one we're going to do with our balls is you can take one and you can roll it over your neck. So I'll come over here to show you what I'm talking about. We've got our somewhat stiff ball. There we go. It looks better. And <laughs> I'm just taking all of my costume off for you guys. Oh my gosh. Here we go. So you take the ball and you use it on the palm of your hand to roll on your neck. So you're pressing in and just finding areas. And so your head is turning the opposite direction. So I'm looking opposite and maybe just kind of rocking my head just like we did, but now you're using the ball. So usually in the front, you don't do this part because that's kind of where you breathe from. Most of your muscles are gonna be here and then going towards the back. And you can also do some of the shoulder blades. So take a couple minutes here to start to, ooh, I could do this the rest of the day to start to rub those out. And if one arm gets tired, switch to the other side. I'm going to put a darker top on so that way you can see me better. Okay, there we go. So you'll notice uh, there's a difference between cosplay yoga for doing yoga in cosplay 
and yoga for instructing and visualization. So there you go, guys. Take a couple more moments here just to find any other kinks. Oh man, I missed out on this. I'll be doing this one later. So again, you can do this anytime. Watching TV, if there's commercials, take a break. Do this. Feels really good. So that's number one. Now if you've got both, we're gonna do our first little arm workout. This one is one of the first things I learned in yoga, and I don't even think it's a real yoga pose, but it's great for toning your arms. So you take one ball in each hand, roll the shoulder blades back and down, come into your T pose, that power pose, and you just hold the balls in your hand. Now this seems fine, right? Look at that, you can kind of see if your arms are balanced. Try and make it a nice even T. And then roll the shoulders back and down, breathe here. And at first it should feel fine, but then after a little bit, it starts to feel burny. <laughs> Again, you don't want pain. And if you think it's not a challenge, you can use heavier weights, heavier balls. I use like little medicine balls, like little, like teeny tiny, the ones that you throw at people. <laughs> no, not the big ones, <laughs> like one smaller than this, but they've got those little beans inside. Anyways, that was how I used to work out as a child. I used to do this for about three to five minutes. And it's really good for toning those arms. But again, if it feels like too much or you feel tingling or anything like that, stop, come back to your breathing. Keep those shoulder blades back, keep your posture straight. If you need to sit in a chair to do this, you can move over. We are, we are going to use chairs if you have them. Keep breathing, we'll do another 30 seconds. Pulling those shoulder blades back, breathing. Ten more seconds. And let it go. Shake those arms out. Oof. And all we were doing was holding up a couple little tennis balls, right? Ooh. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of circles here, just like you're doing breaststroke. Again, just that's what my body says I need to do. Maybe a little back stretch. I'm just holding my hands behind my back. I'm looking up again. There's no wrong way to do yoga. Do what your body tells you, not necessarily to look the same as the instructor, because definitely you don't want to look like him, <laughs> right? Uh, do what works for you. So that was our arm workout. Hmm. And as you're doing these, we're going to do a couple more rolling things with the balls on your body now. So just try slowly applying pressure. I'm sure you had fun with that. You can also, like if there was a spot on your shoulder that was really tight, you could just press down on it and hold it there instead of rolling. And that does a different kind of release, more of like a trigger point. Or you can roll or you can press. There's like little kneading motions. You have to find what works for you. Maybe one person really likes to just push into it. Another one may really like to do the rolling motion. So as we go through all of these, take time to figure out what works. So the next one we're going to be doing is shoulder blades. This can be done on the wall or if you don't have it laying down. So we did our neck, now we're gonna do our shoulders. And I'm just gonna show you here. So what you're looking at is Oh yeah, look at these muscles. Whoa. The shoulder blade, so you're going to be putting the ball like somewhere in your shoulder blade area. Look at this, right? Somewhere here. And you're going to be pressing and rolling against it. So it'll be down here, up here, and over. So I'm going over to my wall. You can stand or you can sit. I'm just going to do it here on my knees, I guess. It's the easiest. So I'm taking the ball, placing it on my shoulder, and then just leaning into it and kind of boogie woogie in. Again, nobody can see you, so start to roll. Maybe put a little pressure. Feel what kinks you have. <sighs> Anybody watching this video is gonna be like, what's going on here? And uh, yeah, just kinda move up and down with it. You could use both if you've got that kinda good back coordination, I guess. We can try it for double, double the pressure, double the fun. Kind of works the other thing keep going guys the other thing that i do is i have a long tube sock you put both of them inside the tube sock and then they don't roll away from each other 
So when you have this at home, if you want, you can also get like a whole roll of tennis balls and make one into a double. They call this a peanut because it kind of looks like a peanut when it's in the sock. <laughs> or you can do the singles. So let's switch to the other side. And again, if you really like this, you could keep doing this. <laughs> Just dropped it. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, right? Oh yeah, okay. Here we go. And again, find what works for you. Or maybe if it's not working for you, you can keep rubbing your neck or breathe. Maybe you do try it laying down. It's a little easier laying down, um, but I think it's better on the wall when you're standing because you have more uh, movement naturally than if you have your whole body pressing on the ground. So here you can wiggle a little bit more without putting too much pressure. And again, I could be wrong. Maybe it works perfect for you guys. Okay. And the, as you get done, again, maybe let's do a couple of stretches with this, huh? If you have a strap, now's a great time to do some flossing. Now that you've taken our strap workshop, if you have one, you can. Oh, I could even use my belt as a demonstration. Or if not, just move your arms with me. So you take your arms wider than your shoulders, inhale them up, and again, you can do this standing. It feels great. Exhale down. And you can stay here, inhaling up and exhaling down. Or if it's available to you on the inhale, continue to move your arms up and back if there's no pain and you might be able to go all the way full rotation if you have very healthy shoulders if not don't worry but that's full floss or just move your arms feel how your shoulders feel after that little rub and if you don't want to do this you can keep doing those little rubs you may need to widen your uh, your grip on the strap to go all the way out too that's fine and again if you don't have a strap it's easy you just just move your arms, right? Make that circle, but try and keep your arms moving at the same time. Yeah, I'll do a couple more here. Inhaling up <laughs> and exhaling down. Here we go. So again, all kinds of cool options here. And honestly, I have a lot of cool uh, links. I'm gonna post one at the end here because I'm not gonna be able to get through half of the cool things they shared. One of the benefits of doing this is that you spend five minutes on each one, but that also means less time to do poses. So with that, we're going to do another shoulder one. Now this one, I use this physical therapy and for you, it may or may not be available. So you come sideways to the wall, and you put one arm behind. Oops, you gotta have your ball too. <laughs> and then you scooch up to it. So this is, if this is enough, that's all you have to do. You're pressing into the wall and then you turn your chest and peel it outwards and you'll feel a big stretch across your shoulder. But this, again, I had to do physical therapy because it wasn't working for me at one point. So it may not work for you. Keep your shoulder back and down, but just peel your chest open and feel the stretch. You're gonna feel it all the way under your arm and shoulder. Then, if it's available, you would put the ball between your shoulder and the wall. I should not be doing this on the microphone side. Let's try this. And then you roll. And your hand might be floating or just your fingertips touching. But now you're massaging your underarm <laughs> and the shoulder area. And then maybe if you want to do the shoulder, you can drop your arm and start to roll your shoulder on the wall or on. Like, honestly, you can just do it with the ball. It's probably a lot easier and a lot less awkward. <laughs> so let's play around with that for a couple minutes. Or if you want to continue doing shoulder blades, you can do shoulder blades. We're just doing upper body against the wall here. And then if you want, you can actually face the wall and do a pectoral as well. Because um, this, this area right here on your pecs gets super, super, super tight. It may be really sensitive. Uh, but again, you can also just kind of do this. So this area, this area, like taking a bath with the soap here, and this area, okay? Have fun with it. 
Have fun with it, guys. <sighs> Maybe I'll just do this. Breathing. And just playing around. That one's really tight. This one was the most recent injury for me. So again, that's where you say, ooh, well, if this doesn't work for me, what can I do? What is sore? What needs work? I always feel like this under the arm cross rib area. When I see my chiropractor, he always beats me up right here. You'd be surprised if you haven't gone to a chiropractor and you can get it with your insurance, it's worth it. If you have a very low or no copay, please do. I mean, obviously in COVID, it's a little more difficult, but they do wonders. And the older you get, the more that alignment, you being here doing yoga helps so much. But those little adjustments can be fantastic. So that's your old rift wing designs, body falling apart recommendation of the day. All right, find any other stretches you need to here. I'm actually going to go back and do just a little on the shoulder blades. And then find if you need to do any other stretches. Maybe the side to side one's gonna feel good now that we just did our underarms. Maybe this time do a circle. So notice how as I'm twisting, I'm scooping under, reaching back, coming through, then drawing the other arm forward, scooping under and doing the slow motion circles each way. This is fun. It also does a little bit if you're sitting, it does a massage on your hip bones. If you're standing, just, just play around with it. Again, there's no wrong way. In fact, you might invent a cooler way. If so, share it with me at Riffling Designs. I'd love to see pictures and videos. And now I'm just kind of swaying side to side, reaching forward. Just feeling what I want to feel. Is this actual yoga? I do it in classes, so that counts, right? Okay, come back to stillness. We're halfway there, guys, which means we need to start going down the body. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna finish our standing routine first. So you'll want one or two balls. This is gonna be weird without a zoom. I'm gonna be putting it underneath my foot. Let me, let me show you my foot first. So when you're doing foot, especially if you have um, fasciitis, plantar fasciitis, Here's my yoga stretch. So this is like the big toe pose, right? But I'm holding the desk. So on your foot, you can roll on the blade, the ball on the back, the ball on the front, or very slowly back and forth here. But this one, the middle is very tender. I can tickle. So those are the things we'll be doing. Use the wall or a chair for support and then place your foot on the ball. First, I would say use the, the palm of your foot, the front pads underneath your toes, and just kind of roll and grab it with your toes. And you can go side to side, or you can go back and forth, or you can do circles. If you have it on a mat or a carpet, the ball won't slide as much as the hardwood I am noticing. <laughs> so roll that foot around. Now the opposite leg, don't lock your knee again. And keep your shoulder blades back and down. Let's do a little bit of yoga stretching too, right? Nice posture. Now, if this works, you can keep doing it. Or switch to the back of your foot on the heel. Maybe you have to adjust your stance. Maybe just try and step on the ball and push your heel in. I've got my toes down, and I'm just kind of pumping it with my heel. And then maybe do some circles. This one's harder for me. Again, focus on that nice posture. 
Then go onto the blade, the outside edge of your foot, and just roll that. Okay, this is balance too. It's a really good balance challenge. Hand-eye coordination, hand-foot coordination. <laughs> wait, wait, foot-eye coordination. There we go. Oh, my gosh, guys. And then gently start to roll it all the way forward and back, pressing just lightly to see how sensitive the middle part of your foot is. Okay? And if you need to, you can do circles, or you can go back and forth, or you can go side to side. So for me, uh, medium pressure, I start to really feel it's not pain it's a pressure a tightness and not necessarily like a muscle knot but just um it just feels like pressure like a really intense pressure and that's fine pain again is not fine lighten up if you have that pain and again this is highly highly recommended if you have plantar fasciitis but again if you do have any medical conditions consult your doctor before doing these exercises a little bit more and then we're going to switch to the other foot this one is amazing i literally at work like an office at work people take off their shoes and do this underneath their desks it's very healthy uh, as long as you don't have stinky feet <laughs> or anybody nearby but even if you do like i had a guys like my doctor told me to do it i'm like that's cool keep going man i'll join you so I use a medicine ball, a, a tougher ball, I, again, at work to do this. All right, switch sides. First, again, experimenting on the palm of the foot, that underneath the toes bit. Again, you can do this when you're sitting at your desk. You can do this when you're playing video games. You can do this watching TV. I would not recommend doing it when you cook, especially with knives. <laughs> but if you're watching a pot boil, uh, or not boil sure all right now switch and just put pressure on the heel again maybe put your toes down and just pump and feel how that feels and then maybe try to do some balance again don't lock your front knee keep your posture straight and roll your heel on the ball good Then the blade of your foot. So adjust your stance. Use the outside edge of your foot on the ball. Maybe you bend your knee more here. Maybe your pressure is better. Maybe you want to sit down for this. Again, you don't have to do it standing. <laughs> Try it seated. Find what works for you. That's the most important part. You. Your little heart. All right, then begin to slowly with less pressure, roll back and forth on your foot, the entire length of your foot, feeling how different this foot feels. And then as you add pressure, noticing any areas of discomfort versus pain. For me, the back almost by my heel is where it is, whereas the other one, it was more centered. Very interesting. <laughs> right there you go and i'll give you another minute to play around do whatever you need remember nice posture don't lock your knee breathe it's the closest thing you're going to get to a foot spa right now and you know rarity loves getting your hooves done All right, take any last movements you need with your feet here. Now, there is an added bonus round. If you want with both balls and the wall or a chair or something sturdy, you can try and do pressure on both feet. Maybe I'll just try my heels first. Oh, that's cool. Okay, or you can try doing both standing on it. Wow, that's a lot of pressure. So that's your full body weight pressing on your feet. That may be too much. Or maybe in the front, sit with your heels down, pressing your toes in and curling your toes around the ball. If you do that, maybe try and crunch your toes and then release. So you're doing like little toe curls, like little toe crunches. Again, keeping your balance. Just play around with maybe doing, ooh, or maybe marching. I'm marching with the, the palms or the toe area. 
And I'm just marching and squishing that ball a little bit. That feels cool. Again, careful with your balance, breathing. And then now take any last movements you need. And give your feet a little love. Ooh, all right, break time. Grab yourself a drink. Exactly. Okay, so now we've done our feet. We're going to sit down. Now there's going to be a few I do in a chair and there's going to be a few on the ground. Just find something comfortable. Again, we only have another 20 minutes, guys. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is um, first I'll show you what you can do in this also if you have that roller. Um, if you have a roller, what we're going to be doing is you just put your legs on it, both in the calves and the thighs, and you can just rock your legs back and forth or side to side. So side to side or back and forth. And that's just a nice way. And then if your wrists aren't too sore, you can press, lift, and you use more of your body weight in it. So if you don't have a roller, you use the ball, one leg at a time or both legs again with balance. So you put the tennis ball underneath your calf and just roll it around. Or both if you're really coordinated and keep them synchronized. So back and forth, side to side. And again, if you lift up your bum, put more weight into it and hold yourself up so you're not getting a wrist stretch, keep those shoulders back and down. It's almost like, I'm gonna show you, it's almost like a reverse plank that you're holding yourself up in. And if you want to do a reverse plank, go ahead. It's your practice, not mine. And then if you go side to side or back and forth. I guess you can't do this one in the chair as well. That would be more like just using your hand. And again, you can't just use your hand. Um, while we're doing that, why don't we go up to our shins? So I'm taking it in my hand and I'm going on the outsides of my legs here. So again, I could do this for 15 minutes, and I do. As part of my cool down routine, I generally do that roller on my legs and then on my back and shoulders. And yes, we're finishing with back and shoulders. Then take your ball and just gently roll it around your kneecap. Don't roll it on your kneecap, but just see if there's any tightness around the knee or the side of the knee. Maybe there's not, but keep a, keep a bend in your knee and just kind of have fun. Feel it out with the tennis ball in your hand. You can do the back of your knee, but it can be very sensitive and there's some nerves and things. So I would recommend just rolling around the front of your knee on one side and then the other. Just playing around with it. Switch sides if you haven't already. And give yourself some love. Again, it feels like I'm just scrubbing myself with soap because you can't see the ball. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with your upper legs. So again, you can put one or two, or if you have that peanut, you can put that peanut underneath you. And again, I'm just pressing one foot, the opposite foot down, and we're, ooh, yeah, I'm rolling on this. Have fun with it, guys. You can go back and forth, side to side. Or you can use your roller, right? Oh, that's so good. I can just do this. This is rocking the boat, right? Definitely lifting your bum here will help you get a lot more mobility. Now, if you go to the side, this is where your IT band is. Uh, don't press too hard on your IT band. You're not supposed to massage it. You're supposed to massage around it because you can injure it. So try not to go exactly on the side when you're rolling, but just do the edges. And again, see, I have to hold myself up because it's so much pressure that I literally can't. It looks a little weird, but there we go, right? Again, I can't see you, so do you, do what works. And we are gonna get to your bum next, but don't go there yet. All right, switch sides if you haven't already. Try the peanut again. It felt good. 
finding a way that works for you to roll out the back of your leg. Now imagine if we had a two hour class or you know they do 75 minute classes. So you spend the 60 minutes doing your yoga and then you do this afterwards, feels amazing. Maybe try rolling the side a little bit using your hand or your weight. We're still getting a workout in moving and holding ourselves up here, just not, not the same as a normal yoga session, but again, you know, rarity. Would she work out? Mm, a little. <laughs> okay. And again, maybe try playing around with the side. Oh my goodness, it's tender. Whether you're rolling or putting weight on it or using your hand here, find what works for you. And again, you can stay here. Or, so there's two options for the top of your legs. You can just use your hands. You can move to your belly and like belly flop on it. Uh, I'll show you with the roller because it works much better. So you're going in, if you want, you can do a flow here. So you're going into like your down dog and your plank, right? And then drop your knees. And so I'm tucking my toes here and just rolling back and forth. So I'm actually kind of doing that push-up or the chaturanga, depending on if your elbows are out for the push-up or in for chaturanga. You could do this with a tennis ball, but it's much smaller. So a roller is really good here. So I can do it like this with balance, and now my arms are really getting a workout. Or like this. Oh, yeah, man, guys, I could keep doing this so long <laughs> but we got to keep moving so if you're on your belly or doing your push-ups here yeah that works it's just a little smaller the peanut again would be fantastic here so just take a couple more moments to do the tops of your legs we've done bottoms feet shins knees thighs tops of our legs i know there's a term for it i'm not so good at anatomy guys don't tell anybody okay Hips, let's do hips and then bum. So for hips, and this is my beautiful rarity scarf, we're going to be doing it. There's a bone here, a pelvic bone, and then around the bone, don't not on the bone, but the meat around <laughs> The meat around the bone is where you might want to try and do some rubbing. But you don't just have to use your hands here. This one, you're going to be on your belly as well. So you're down. Maybe you do a little crocodile or a, a locust. And then you plant down, lift one hip, put the ball underneath. Actually, that's enough for me. Just putting the weight on the ball is enough. But then you could lift up, do some rocking and rolling. Oh my goodness, that's a little too much. So for me, I'm just going to sit here. Maybe do a sphinx. So your palms are down, elbows underneath your shoulders, and the weight is on. Oof. You could do both at once, or you can do one at a time. Both at once is very intense, but it feels like a good intense, so I'm going to do that. If you're in Sphinx with me, continue to breathe. If you're rolling around, whether you're standing or sitting, just play around with that hip area. Sphinx is generally held for at least 5 to 20 seconds can be held longer, but just keep those shoulders back and down. Or if you want, you can cross your arms, rest your head on your arms, but you still want to hold your shoulders up back. Or if you go flat chest, that works too, actually. <laughs> there's no wrong way as long as there's no pain. Now maybe shift where the balls <laughs> are located, maybe further up. Ooh. It's like laying an egg. Breathing. And again, you could do this forever. Oh, I'm actually going to do a little counter stretch now. So I'm going to go back into my child's pose, tucking your toes, keeping them together, wide knees, and then lowering back and down. And while we're here, why don't we massage the forehead by rolling it back and forth, up and down on your mat. And if you want, come to stillness and just feel that stretch. And if you took our block shop, maybe you put your arms or head or 
chest or back on a block here as well whatever works for you breathing here we're almost done guys so press back up bum time our favorite right this can be done seated or on the wall same thing as we did before right you just, or you can use your hand right just rub it around just rub it around appropriately <laughs> so if you're on the wall you lean into the wall and just kind of groove and do your little belly dance find what works for you now obviously standing would be better than kneeling but i'm just keeping you guys in frame and then if you're on your back <laughs> i think it probably works just as well like this so you're lowering down putting it underneath and they can either stay there again or maybe you invite gentle movements rolling the ball around to release your muscles and your fascia for your gluteus maximus right give that cutie mark a massage you think there are cutie mark masseuses do they make the cutie marks glow It'd be pretty cool and get a little touch up they don't really focus on that in the show i think that needs to be a spin-off the beauty parlor spa sisters ah. I just realized I wanted to put my arms above my head that feels great so I'm staying still I've got the balls underneath me and I'm breathing but we're not done yet we're not done yet we've got a couple more minutes so let's just show you a couple back and shoulders same you could do on the wall but because we're starting to cool down and we only have 10 minutes you can do one or both ball balls underneath you so as you're down now you can do lower back so that's here on your spinae erecti spinae erecti uh, spinae erecti <laughs> there we go you can do it under your shoulder blade so what i showed you before that we did in the wall now we can do ooh, ooh we can do this here and that is intense so i'm not gonna roll but it feels great you can do one you can do two you can do the peanut and I have my knee up just because it feels better. This feels like too much for me. So the knee on the same side of the back, I'm, I'm just using to hold myself up, pressing down with my opposite arm and breathing. So you can do the, the shoulder blade near the spine and you can do the shoulder blade, oop, <laughs> there it goes. You can do the shoulder blade higher up. And that one I wanna keep my arm open for, it just feels better. So feel what works for you. You're gonna have two minutes here to play around with your back. So shoulder blades, back, spine. Don't put it on the bone again, <laughs> but find what works for you. We're gonna do neck last, so don't worry. Don't worry about your neck. We started there, we're gonna end there. I'm just wriggling around. Ooh, finding what works. <sighs> There we go, that feels good. I think a peanut would work really well along your spine on those erector spinae because it would give you the space to let the spine go. And if you do have a roller, this is a lot easier. You just lay on it. Again, using your abs here, keeping your feet flat. And what I like to do with it is I will go and do like little sit-ups. I'm scooching backwards here. <laughs> Uh, little sit-ups and then when I get here I can go flat put my arms out and do like the YMCA so Y M C A and then just kind of move your arms around and it gives you some amazing shoulder blade stretches so you could try this with the tennis ball underneath as well doing the YMCA lifting your arms up and over all kinds of movements that can help to massage without you necessarily rolling on the ball and the last thing i'll show you here if you have that roller put it the other way make it long and it's very a lot of balance and you want to make sure your head is on it so you're it's better to have a long one so your head is supposed to rest on it this is too short but imagine this is the end of the roller oh maybe i can scooch and just hold myself up your head's on the roller your spine's on the roller and the, the roller should go pretty much to your bum and then you just stay here and try and balance and then you can try and do like one foot balance 
it's really, I mean, we should do a roller session too, because rollers are amazing, but they're expensive, which is why not everybody has them, but most people have a firm ball. So time to cool down, guys. We've done our body down to our neck. So if you have an opportunity to make that peanut, you can do the peanut underneath your neck, and it feels so good. We're just going to do one tennis ball. So you're going to put it under your neck, not kind of in the, the area of the small of your neck where it bends, but if it's painful or if you have any neck issues, don't do that. But just kind of roll your head around the ball <laughs> and feel what it feels like. If this doesn't work for you, you can sit up again and just roll it around with your hand. <sighs> or maybe you just stay still here and feel it. You can actually like balance your head on the ball too for some pressure points on your skull. However, those are a little sensitive, so I would recommend a, a peanut for that. And again, I'm just going to do it seated because it's a little easier. Any last kinks in your neck? And if you're sitting with me, you can do your shoulders one more time. And now as we get ready for Savasana, if you have any other stretches you need to do, maybe you need to twist, maybe get a blanket, because we're going to cool down and we didn't build up a lot of heat today, so it might get chilly. I'm going to put my Rarity jacket on again. <laughs> okay. Get ready. Make your final movements as we head into Savasana, our final resting pose. I always like to do this twist quick, so I'm just going to... Give myself a hug and stretch. And as you get down into your final resting pose, you have the option of keeping the ball behind your neck or using blocks, straps, or any other props that we've done in previous workshops. Oh, there we go. You want your shoulder blades back and down. This is gonna be too noisy. <laughs> you want your shoulder blades back and down, your feet wide, maybe lift each heel. Maybe wriggle side to side, feeling how it feels to have your body on the hard floor after rolling around on the ball. Nod your head from side to side. Palms down for grounding or palms up to receive energy. And I'm going to go through a body scanning exercise for you because, again, we did a lot of relaxation, a lot of pressure. <sighs> Deep breath in with me and let it go. Feel it go down to your belly. Inhale and exhale. Feel your toes. Notice how different they feel now after using the ball to massage toes, the palm of your foot, in the middle, and the heels. Make any last movements of your feet. The same with your lower leg and calf. Notice how different it feels now. Do you feel any pulsing of blood? Hopefully no tingling. <laughs> and your kneecap and knee. Maybe pull your kneecaps in and release. And then your thighs. And your bum, maybe you adjust the flesh a little bit and just get yourself nice and grounded. And your hands, you know, we didn't really massage your hands, you can, but we also did use them a lot to add pressure. We didn't really do arms as much. Shoulders, shoulder blades, again, maybe adjust those shoulder blades back and down, something comfortable. Ah, your chest, if you did any of those on your chest and your neck. Now release your jaw and release your tongue. I'll just move your jaw around a little. <laughs> or maybe stick out your tongue and bleh. Big yawn. Feel it and then let it come to stillness. If you'd like here, you can take your hands and just gently place your fingertips on your jaw and give it a big circular rub. Maybe opening and closing your jaw here. And 
and then move your hands up to where your ear just below where your earlobe starts there should be a little pressure point there it's kind of at the nook of your ear and jaw and rub there and if you open and close your jaw you'll actually feel your jaw hinge here so if your jaw hinge needs to be rubbed go ahead and then take your fingertips up to your temples if it's not too sensitive and just do circles with your fingertips on your temple taking nice deep breaths and if you're circling one direction go the opposite maybe slow it down just a little and let that jaw go let your tongue go they're done now and then take your fingertips to the forehead. So I've got all of my fingertips and I'm just doing circles on my forehead. One way and then the other, or maybe just up and down or side to side. I'm breathing. And then take your thumbs and place them in between your eyes. So it's that little nook where your eyebrows and your eyes are. And if you want, you can kind of open up your elbows and just, just use the pressure of your thumbs here. So it's almost like you're doing googly eyes, right? Just use the pressure in your forehead. Or if that doesn't work, you can use your fingertips and you're just pressing the center place of your third eye in between your eyebrows. And then maybe you just kind of brush your hands over your face. Or rub it through your hair, give your scalp a little rub. And as you're ready, release those hands and arms. Maybe just wriggle your fingertips and take any last movements you need before we go into true savasana. One more deep breath. And take these next two moments to find stillness and relaxation. And I'll call you out on the other side. If this feels good, you can stay here as long as you need. And if you're with me, 
begin to slowly take deeper breaths. Maybe rotate your wrists and bring gentle movement to your fingers. And roll your ankles and bring gentle movement into your toes. And maybe go into a really big stretch. Mm, feeling those muscles after a long massage workout. And as you're ready, roll over to one side and stay there for a moment with your eyes closed. While this workout has not been true yoga, just like rarity, one definition doesn't always suit everyone. While she's generally prim and proper, she was thrown into chaos and had to decide what to do with a bad situation. And she became punk rarity to take hold of her own problems and make them beautiful. So as you go forward, if you find problems, think of ways that you can relax and adjust and maybe find something new to make it better. Begin to roll up, coming into a seated position. Your eyes can be closed, you can invite a gentle gaze. Remember to roll your shoulders back, chest back. And if you're with me, take a deep inhale in, and let it go. Arms up, inhale. And hands come together, drawing down to heart center. Again, I thank you for being here with me. Come back to your intention now. And as we move forward, decide if you need another one or if this will continue to work for you. We'll seal it with one breath and then a big cleansing breath to end our practice. So first a small one, inhale. And exhale. And then one big inhale. And let everything go. Thank you again for being here for this next episode of our workshop. And I invite you to join me for the next ones coming up Saturdays at noon. Again, thank you for your practice. Draw your knuckles up to your forehead where we just have that lovely massage. The light and love in me honors and thanks the light and love in all of you. Go in peace. Namaste. Thank you, every creature. I had so much fun today. And again, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Until then, take care.